We've got an absolute monarch in Swaziland and this family are in control of everything. The judicial system, parliament, they appoint the prime minister and then take away the power for them to say anything that is useful to the people. There is three MPs that decided to speak on behalf of the masses. One is in exile, two of them are in jail. Democratic parties, a variety of them, they're joining hands because they're saying the same thing. The protests are intensifying each and every day. children going out and protesting because they themselves are becoming victims of and are conscious of all the political unrest. This week we've seen public transport operators joining in the protest. They are demanding better salaries, a pension and also a change on the minimum salary. On top of that, they are also standing together with the entire nation in saying that we demand the release of all political prisoners in this country because there are many who are still in jail because of their political beliefs. And then there is also the issue of police brutality. Each and every day we hear a new story of how police have killed somebody. Two months ago, the army was unleashed during the protest and they killed about 80 people and left some of the people paralyzed. Police are really brutal at the moment, just killing people because that's what the king has told them. The protest started when a guy named Tabani Komonye was killed by the police. He was a university student. Because he was saying things, making the noise, then they killed him and pretended that it was an accident. The police actually covered it up. So people started demanding justice for that. That's when we saw the police beating up people, harassing people in a funeral. It's just a terrible situation to be. They have taken a bad and a terrible decision just to kill the poor civilian. Because if you kill your people, who are you going to rule tomorrow? Viva the people's struggle! Viva! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No peace! Swati must fall! Swati must fall! Must fall. The respondents should have negotiated something. So we sit down in a dialogue. He is now a detector. It's going to be like lots of lies. The king and the government, they are doing it just for the sake of some stakeholders who have joined this protest. It's like fooling ourselves and telling ourselves that we're going to have a good dialogue with him and his government. He tells the whole world that there is peace in Switzerland and um, fairness and democracy. There isn't. The king owns the businesses. Foreign countries that come to set up businesses, they go there, give people very little money, but they sort the king out. Switzerland has got a lot of resources. There's gold mines, there's sugar that's being exported, getting a lot of money. It buys the lavish style for the king and his family. It's not only taking the resources, they're showing us, look, all the cars they've got, but people are dying of starvation and no medication. So it's like laughing at the nation. The money is there and it's not distributed fairly. We've got poor healthcare, 
poor education systems. In the clinics, you find that sometimes they are not even the most basic drugs. If that's the case, how then are you going to treat your patients? You send them back with nothing, but then people do not have the money to go buy their own medication. And we've had a high infection of HIV and a lot of young men and women died, leaving young children. So now the grandmas are looking after these children without, and they cannot physically work because they're older, but there's no support for them. So they're going hungry and these children, six, seven years old, end up looking after these elderly people and doing things that adults should be doing. They're supposed to get a grant for to leave, but it doesn't come on time. And when it does come, it don't go far enough. Currently, we have a lot of nurses who graduated, uh, but the government does not hire. They are saying that they do not have money to pay for their salaries. So it also adds to the issue of unemployment. <laughs> Unemployment is extremely high and the social system is totally broken. But my friends and relatives that live in Swaziland, they go through an education system and they graduate, then there's no opportunities for them. A family that don't have money sacrifices food to put somebody through education, hoping that when they finish, they'll contribute to the society and to the family. But that doesn't happen. Last time I was there in 2019, I read in the papers that teachers and TAs in government schools hadn't been paid for three months. So the kids are fighting for their education, but they're being let down by the system that funds the schools. A lot of kids are actually off school at the moment because they're scared to go into school because there are police and soldiers guarding the schools armed with guns because they're basically being intimidated and they're trying to scare them out of protesting. The king allocates MPs, positions in parliament, in local authority, within police departments, lawyers, judges, the whole bureaucratic system is allocated to friends and relatives and that way funds are siphoned off into the king's pocket and those officials pocket and that's why people are starving and the school children haven't got decent education and opportunities. So the rich are just getting richer and the poor are just getting poorer and there's not much give. When it comes to like social inequality and corruption and human rights violations, you can draw parallels when high court judges are appointed by the king in Swaziland. You know that they're always going to rule in his favour because they're going to get a fat salary, they have houses and swimming pools and jets and Ferraris. They're not going to turn against him anytime soon. And it's the same way that in the UK, the statistics on being black and how we interact with the justice system here, we get a tough ride compared to those white collar criminals. Since 1973 till today, one human being on average a week has been killed at the hands of police within the UK. One person on average a week, and that's ridiculous figure when you think about one funeral a week and only a few officers have been convicted for any of those murders in the same way that in Swaziland I don't think anyone's been tried and 70 plus people have been killed since June for protesting peacefully so when you look around you you see that it's got different makeup different face on it but it's an international thing the reason why I'm here is to support the people of Swaziland. I'm here to support my people back home. Enough is enough. We are sick and tired of King Swati. We don't like what is happening. The soldiers, the king allowing the soldiers to kill people which are unarmed, but armed with black cards asking for democracy. And again, let's go. Mancini! Fix, fix! Bavani! As the Swazis in the UK, I feel 
We are now doing what the government should be doing. We are giving our families money to buy medication. We have to work twice as hard here so we can send money home and survive here with our own families. We cannot progress in England because we have to do this thing that the government should be doing. Everybody here is scared that we come here, we say this, he's going to look for us and do something. It's like we're dead anyway. It's important for the diaspora to engage and amplify the demands and the voices of our people back home. We've just delivered a petition to the Swazi High Commission and we hope that they'll discuss that in Parliament. Swaziland is signed up to the UN Convention, so we are asking these external bodies to ask Swaziland why this is happening. The people that have been shot and killed, we want an investigation. What happened? And somebody to be responsible for it. And we are asking them to do targeted sanctions for the king and his family. Stop him traveling anywhere in the world. Those are some of the demands we are all trying to get and we are not able to rest until they are met. So to support from wherever you are, tune into Swazi Lives Matter, social media platforms and other pro-democracy news platforms. Find out exactly what's going on on the ground in this way and share those stories. We are starting a fundraiser to donate towards counselling the people that have been badly affected by the unrest to support victims of police brutality, state violence, supporting the families, providing money for hospital bills for people that were badly hurt or whether it might even be funds for funerals. So support and donate to the fundraiser. And finally, please come along to our protests, which we publicise on our Swazi Lives Matter UK Facebook page. <laughs> Ayanya, ma wo ni wo ma wo ni wo. Ayanya,